Atlanta is the best place to live in the US. Agree or disagree? Well, we're gonna dive into that in what better time than now because according to money.com, an article just came out from them this past 24 hours stating that Atlanta is the best city in the US. And they list a smorgasbord, a myriad of different reasons why. And I'm gonna kind of give you my reaction to it, whether I think it's true or not going through the list. Now, money.com has been known to create these lists of best places to live for the last 35 years. But in particular, this year, it highlights the city that I live in and work in, Atlanta, Georgia. So in the article, they mentioned this. Atlanta isn't a massive city. Population-wise, it hovers right below 500,000, on par with Kansas City and Omaha. But both culturally and economically, the Georgia capital punches way above its weight. Now, I could probably agree with this for the most part. If you look at the metropolitan area of Atlanta, which is another stat that you wanna consider, the entire metropolitan area of Atlanta is actually around six million in population. If you go all the way up to Roswell and pass to the west side, Sandy Springs, then it includes six million people. Now, if you're actually comparing for the cultural part to other cities of similar size, then yes, Atlanta is a very multicultural and diverse city. And if you look at its neighboring suburbs within the metropolitan area, especially like Gwinnett County, it is actually considered the most diverse county in the entire Southeast United States. So there is very much truth in that. And even so in the downtown area. Now, as far as economically, yes, you've got so many jobs here when it comes to finance, healthcare, supply chain logistics, um, retail, all kinds of jobs that are good for people who either have graduated from some of the universities here or elsewhere and wanting to move here to find a job. It's a very great place for young professionals and people who are in their 20s and 30s. And there's a huge semi Hollywood scene, I would say, for aspiring actors and actresses. The article goes on to say that it's the fourth largest black majority city in the US and the proud hometown of Martin Luther King Jr. It has some of the best universities in the country, including Georgia Tech, which ranked six on Money's 2022 list of best colleges, and a culinary scene that champions steakhouses and greasy spoon diners in equal measure. And it goes on to talk about baseball themed drag shows. Not sure if I like that. But yes, there's no lie that there is a huge African-American or black population here in Atlanta. And it's great to see that there's a lot of history with Martin Luther King Jr. And yes, there are amazing universities here like Georgia Tech that graduates so many young professionals into the workforce with jobs that are high tier pay and very much important jobs, such as in software engineering or anything related to engineering, really, IT and fields such as that. Speaking of jobs, in the article it mentions that our data and report Reporting show that Atlanta's labor market, the number of jobs available in a range of different occupations, is exceptionally strong. It's still a job seekers market no matter where in the US you happen to live, but Atlanta's unemployment rate is lower than the national average. Better yet, the city's job growth has been consistently outpacing the US for more than a year, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Tech jobs are driving much of the growth. Atlanta also has a flourishing startup ecosystem. It goes on to say that Silicon Valley behemoths like Apple, Microsoft, and Alphabet have all recently opened up shop in Atlanta. Just last week, I went to an event in Duluth, which is in Gwinnett County. Uh, it was called Japan Festival. And there I had a shirt on that said San Francisco. And within just a few minutes, I ended up running into somebody in the elevator who said, are you from San Francisco? I said, no, I've been in Atlanta for several years. And then he went on to say that, oh, I just moved here recently from San Francisco and he works in the tech field. So you end up hearing a lot of stories like that of people coming from other places in the country moving here for tech jobs. And you'll see that there are a lot of other reasons why, not just for the jobs. Another point to mention in the article is that like every place on this list, Atlanta is not perfect. Rising prices have had an outsized impact on the city's most vulnerable residents and have made it increasingly hard for legacy black families to afford to live comfortably. An incoming wave of new residents, the 11 counties that make up the city's commutable area, 
are expected to gain two and a half million people by 2040, bringing it to a total of eight million, stands to exacerbate the problem. Still, Atlanta stands out not because of its shortcomings, but what it's doing to solve them. Now, here's one thing where I'm gonna have to kind of disagree a little bit, and it's in regards to the traffic here, and especially as according to this article, if the projected number for the population is to be 8 million in 2040, around that time period, then we're in big trouble. And the biggest reason why is because we have a lack of public transportation. We do have an above ground railway system called the MARTA, and they have a bus system as well, but there are very few stops for the buses and the MARTA system has been trying to expand for many years, but it keeps getting voted down. And I know there are different kinds of reasons why people think that it won't be a good idea to expand MARTA, but personally, I think if we're going to be able to invite in all these people to Atlanta and make them feel welcomed here, then part of it is to solve the traffic problem here, which has not been alleviated in the last 10, 15, 20 years. It's only gotten worse. In fact, when I grew up in Alabama, I went to Auburn University and I would take trips to see friends in Atlanta on the weekends. And during this time, which was like 2006, 2007, 2008, it was a period of time where I could see the traffic being bad, but it wasn't that bad. And as long as you avoided the rush hours, you're fine. But now I find the traffic to be very bad during all times of the day. And I don't know if we have the tools and the mindset to be able to say, hey, we need to expand the MARTA system because we really need to. And to put this into perspective, if you look at New York City, New York City is about 8 million people, not including the metropolitan area. And you see the massive subway system and public transit system there. So can you imagine Atlanta in 2040 becoming like New York City's population without public transit? Yeah, that's gonna be crazy. The article goes on to talk about an entrepreneur. And here it says, Crystal Thomas knows how to hustle for nearly 10 years. The professional event planner climbed the ranks of Atlanta's social scene, decorating parties and designing sets for a seemingly endless stream of photo shoots throughout the city. Until early 2020 when, well, you know what happened next, COVID-19. Then it goes on to say at the bottom, it says, eventually Thomas landed where she's at today, a brick and mortar store on Atlanta's west side. Tropical Express, her dual plant shop event space, is open every Wednesday through Saturday. Now I can attest to Atlanta being one of the best places for small business owners to start their business. I myself am a business owner, I work in real estate, and it has been a joy starting and building my business here in Atlanta. And just seeing the influx of people coming in continues to basically reinforce that people want to live here and that there's so many jobs available here. Now, what about the cost of living? Because I know that has to be talked about, right? Well, yes, in the article, it says here that the city is getting more expensive. That's the case for basically everywhere in the US right now, but compared to other fast growing metros like Austin, Texas, where the cost of living is higher and the salaries are lower, Atlanta is far more frugal. Choose Atlanta, a website designed to entice millennial job seekers has a literal choose your own adventure interactive for comparing living expenses in Atlanta to cities like Austin, New York, and Chicago. Spoiler, Atlanta wins. The current median sales price for a home in the area is 395,000, according to ATTOM housing data, which is less than the median of all the places that qualified for a ranking this year which is 425,000. All told housing costs in the Atlanta Metro are lower than more than half of the places to make money's 2022-2023 list. Now the article did try to compare Atlanta to other cities like New York City and Chicago. And I think those kind of comparisons are a little bit hard to make. And the reason why is because Chicago and New York City are much, much bigger cities with a much diverse population in terms of multiculturalism and different nationalities representing the cities. And there are a lot more things to do in those cities. So I don't know if that's the best comparison to say what well, Atlanta's cheaper than them. Of course it should be if there's less to offer within the city versus those cities up north. But while we're at it, let's take a look at this chart. Speaking of Austin, Texas, you can see that Austin, Texas is actually ranked the number one city in the country for the biggest change in home values from the last crash in 2007 to current day 2022. And then you see Atlanta is actually on the list there at number 14. By far, you can see that Austin had a bigger jump percentage-wise in home values than Atlanta did. 
Relatively speaking, for a city this size that offers as much as it does in terms of diversity, food, shopping, jobs, and so forth, and things to do and places to go around the city, then yeah, I would say Atlanta is a pretty affordable place. From a cultural standpoint, Atlanta isn't all that different from the other places that made our list this year. It's got ample green space, like other places like Denver and Salt Lake City, historical relevance, like Milton and Alexandria, and a food and music scene with global influences, such as Rogers Park and Columbia, and an ever-expanding network of bike and walking trails. So there's definitely a food and music scene that's vibrant and lively here. So when it comes to green space, there's plenty of places where you can walk. There are many walking trails. Check out Piedmont Park, for example. Yes, there's a lot of cultural relevance, such as the Martin Luther King Jr. Museum. And there's other places where you can ride a bike and the Beltline, which circles the entire city of Atlanta, an amazing place. So yes, there are definitely places for recreation and traveling and walking in and around the city. And with that culture comes hopefully more things to do. As it says here in the article, entertainment wise, the city has more things to do than even the most social of butterflies could ever find time for. There's a caveat to this, and I kind of already mentioned it. Yes, there are a lot of things to do in Atlanta, but you have to put forth a lot of effort. Effort in what, you say? effort in driving and commuting. Now, if you live in the city, that's a different story. You could take the MARTA, you could walk to certain locations, but for the most part, you need a car here. And if the traffic's bad, or if there's a car accident and you're at the mercy of the accident, you're gonna be in that highway or interstate lane for a long time. And the thing is, if I was to use myself for an example, I love EDM, so I would go to the Imagine Music Festival, which used to be at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. And to get there, I'd have to drive a long ways. Now, if I'm willing to fight the traffic and I'm willing to drive that long distance myself, I can make it work. I can definitely participate in these things to do that Atlanta has to offer. But some days when I see the traffic and it's so brutally bad, and I look on the GPS and see how much estimated time of 50 minutes to an hour and a half, some days, as much as I wanna go do that thing to do, I end up just staying at home. In summation, towards the end of the article, it goes on to say this. Today, Roach heads the Atlanta agency tasked with maintaining the Atlanta Metro's prosperity across all of its industries and for all its residents. It's a tall order, but the entire city, politicians, business leaders, and community members alike are working in tandem to see it through. In many ways, yes, and in some ways, no. But overall, I would say Atlanta is a wonderful city to live in. The traffic problem is definitely an issue and will only be exacerbated and increase in frustration over time. But besides that, this is a great city in the South and in the US to call home. So check out my channel, please subscribe. I do a lot of other content that's related to just the hyper local market, especially in the North Metro Atlanta area. So hope to see you on the next video.